sometimes we can find the limit of a function by sandwiching it between two simpler functions which serve as lower and upper bounds. If those bounds have the same limit as x approaches a, the point of our interest, then the squeeze theorem says that the function in the middle, the one that we are interested in, also will have that limit. Here is the th what, what the theorem says exactly. If we have three functions f, g and h which are related to one another in such a way when x is near to uh, a, namely g of x is sandwiched between f of x which is the lower bound and h of x which is the upper bound that, and we know that the limits of the bounds exist and are equal then the theorem says that the limit of the function in the middle must also be that same number l. Here's an example. Uh, the limit as x approaches 0 of x times the sine of 1 over x seems like a rather complicated limit and uh, it's unclear how we would evaluate it using the methods uh, that we know so far. But we may start from uh, the uh, fact that the sine function always takes values between negative 1 and 1. So the sine of 1 over x is bound from below by negative 1 and from above by 1. And so multiplying it by x to get the function that we're interested in will result in these inequalities. So we have for the lower bound minus the absolute value of x, for the upper bound the absolute value of x, both of which are simpler functions and whose limits as x approaches 0 we know they exist and are equal 0. Hence by the squeeze theorem we know that the limit we were after it must also be 0. Here is the illustration. So here we see the graph of the function in red being squeezed between the lower and upper bounds and being forced to have the same limit 0 as x approaches the middle 0. Okay, I'll give you two similar results. The first of which says that if f of x and g of x are equal for x near a and their respective limits exist, then those limits must also be equal. Notice how this result doesn't tell you anything about f of a or g of a being related in any way. They might not even be defined. So this, fun this result uh, shows us what I told you is that uh, the limit only cares about the function's behavior around that point x equals a and not its exact value at x equals a. So it's, uh, it's telling us that the limit is indeed a local property rather that, than a point-wise property. Uh, this result is, by the way, the one responsible for the methods of factoring and using conjugates actually working. Okay, uh, the second result I want to show you uh, tells us that if f of x is less than or equal to g of x for x near a and their respective limits exist, then the limits will be related in the same way, namely the limit of f of x will be less than or equal to the limit of g of x. This second result is actually implying the squeeze theorem. Okay, time for some questions. Okay, here is the first question. Suppose that f of x is less than or equal to g of x on the open interval between negative 5 and 5 and we have that the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x equals 1 and the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x equals l. We know it exists but we don't know its precise value. So is it true or false that from these information it follows that uh, L, the limit, must be less than or equal to 1. So pause the video and make your selection. Okay, I hope you paused it and realized that this is indeed true and it's a simple uh, matter of applying the last result I showed you about uh, lim comparing limits. Next, uh, again, f of x is less than or equal to g of x on the interval between negative 3 and 2 this time, with negative 3 not included, 2 included in the interval. And we know that the limit as x approaches 4 of g of x equals 7. And we also know that the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x is equal to L. We know it exists, but we don't know its precise value. So is it true or false that based on this information, it follows that the limit L is less than or equal to 7? So pause the video and make your selection. So in this case, this implication is false because x approaches 4 the point which is outside that interval we, where we actually know how the two functions are related to one another so we cannot make any implications about that limit L. Next question. Suppose that g of x is sandwiched between negative x squared minus negative 2x and x squared plus 2x plus 2 for all real numbers x and use the squeeze theorem to evaluate the limit as x approaches negative 1 of g of x. Okay, I hope you pause the video. 
and have realized that indeed the lower and upper bounds uh, have plus one for a limit as x approaches negative one and those li limits you can find by direct substitution so by the squeeze theorem the function in the middle g of x must have the same limit as x approaches one next suppose that f of x is strictly less than g of x for x near a and their respective limits exist is it true or false that based on this information it follows that uh, these respective limits are related the same way as the functions themselves namely the limit of f of x is strictly less than the limit of g of x so pause the video and make your selection hope you paused it and have realized that this is a false implication i can give you a counter example if f of x is just the constant function zero for all x and g of x is x squared then for all x not zero uh, g of x is strictly greater than f of x so if I pick a to be 0 then this is true for all x not 0 and the, the respective limits that we look at will be equal rather than uh, be unequal x approaching 0 of 0 is the same as x approaching 0 of x squared and they are both 0 okay look at let's look at the next question Suppose that we know that uh, these inequalities hold true for all x not equal to zero. Uh, what does this tell us about the limit of this trigonometric function, the limit as x approaches zero of the sine of x over x? So pause the video and make your selection. Hope you pause it and have realized that, well, this is a, a perfect uh, example where we can use the squeeze theorem, making these strict inequalities uh, less than or equal to which we can without uh, breaking them uh, and then uh, computing the limits of the lower and upper bounds as x approaches zero we get for both of them one by direct substitution hence by the squeeze theorem the limit that we're interested in must also be equal to one okay i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one